Hi, I'm Christina from Intra Arts. I hope that you'll have fun taking part in this project that we've got lined up for you. It's called Hopes and Dreams. What's going to happen is that people are going to make pictures from plastic bags and then we're going to fuse them and make them into large lanterns that are going to be hung all the way through the Pentagon Shopping Centre in Chatham. So you'll be creating pictures at home and then we'll fuse them together and form these giant lanterns so everyone can enjoy them during December and January 2021. Um, we just add to them as we're going along, as people, more people join the project, it will begin to look more and more beautiful throughout the, uh, throughout the project. We're calling this project Hopes and Dreams because we want you to think about all the things that make you feel positive while you're making your part of the art. What are you looking forward to? What makes you feel happy? Is it a person, an object, a place, or is it something else? You can interpret this theme of hopes and dreams in any way you like. It might be hard to do a picture, so you could do colours or shapes that remind you of it if you prefer. Here's what we'll be needing in order to make the pictures. First of all, a white plastic bag. I quite like this crinkly kind. And the first thing we'll need to do is cut off the handles of the bag and so use a pair of scissors just chop those off and then we'll be making them into rectangles that we can use as backgrounds they could be a bit more transparent if you wanted to i quite like them to look fairly white but um, you can have quite see-through ones if you want to we'll also need a bit of paper and some pens so just thin biros are fine i'll be using a, a black thicker ones so you can see what I'm doing a bit better but some sheets of paper either A4 or A3 whatever you have a glue stick so that's the best thing to work with to get them stuck down don't use other glue and we need a selection of colours of plastic bags so if you cut up plastic bags you can find them in all sorts of colours and they can be the thicker ones or the really really crinkly thin ones When you find plastic bags in a range of colours like this and prepare them, they really don't look like waste materials anymore. They start to look like tissue paper, proper art materials. You might find some that have got patterns on them too that you could use. So let's get started with making our background. I'm going to cut the handles off of this crinkly white bag. And then down at the other end, this bag has got folded in corners, um, so I can either just cut the whole of the bottom off or I can cut into those corners. So this makes a little tube and if you cut along the top edge you can fold it out into a nice long sheet. I'm going to cut mine into three, but you could just make one big picture using the whole of that if you wanted to. So now I'm going to do a drawing to guide the picture that I'm going to collage out of the plastic bags. So I need a piece of paper that's the right size. If you've only got smaller pieces of paper, you can glue them together with a glue stick or sellotape but just roughly the same size as your background white plastic bag. I'm going to draw with a thicker pen so you can see it better, but you can use quite a thin gel pen or biro. So you can see my drawing underneath the white plastic bag and I'm now trying to work out which colours I'm going to use on top of it for the petals of this sunflower because I've decided a sunflower is something that is a positive thing for me. I went to Raynham and saw the beautiful sunflowers growing there. So this will be my base layer. I'm going to draw out over the top of the plastic bag with the gel pen or the biro and just get the basic shape of the middle of this. 
when you're cutting a piece of um, paper out or tissue paper out or in this case plastic bags go to the corner or the edge when you're cutting out a shape don't just cut it out straight out of the middle of the uh, bag then you'll have less waste So using the drawing underneath as a guide, you can glue down into place the shapes that you cut out over the top. I quite rarely get them super accurate. I just like to have it there as a idea. So now I'm going to do the petals. And I'm going to have them overlapping a bit. I like the way that the colours mix with each other because they're semi-transparent. You can have different colours mixing together as you overlap them. When the light comes behind them, it looks really pretty. So you can take quite a lot of time over this. You can arrange all the pieces of plastic and kind of change your mind about where they go if you like. So now I'm just going to have a little check and see if the light is coming through it nicely. So I just have to remember it's going to be illuminated so make sure that the colours are working well together. I'm going to add a bit of detail into the middle. And I can't quite see the pen properly through that, so if I take the picture away for a sec, I can go back to the drawing and do my marking out. So, drawing with a gel pen, and remember, into the corner here, so we don't waste the plastic. So now it's coming to making the little holes in the middle uh, for the seed shapes. So I'm folding over the layer of plastic so it's easier to just cut a negative shape. So I'm going to glue this down, but I've put a little bit too much glue underneath the um, central shape there, so I'm spreading it out with my finger. It's quite useful if you um, don't have any big lumps, uh, because it causes a bit of a problem when we're trying to fuse the plastic after you've created your pictures. So try and keep it quite thin. Folding up a bit of the plastic, a strip of the plastic, and just fringing the edge by cutting little triangles into it. And one last check against the light. I've got a light box here, but obviously you can just hold it up to the light. So a bit of a tidy up, um, really we're trying to not create any more waste plastic so we're saving all of these pieces. If you have any leftover bits that you'd like to give back to us at the end we'll be very happy to take them. So you can either scoop up any of the little tiny pieces and then either put them in an envelope or you can just fold a piece of paper to hold it all in. To keep it together and you can put that in with um, with your work when you give it to us to to make into lanterns so you can fold it all over and just use the glue stick to keep this in a little pocket so we don't create any little tiny pieces of waste and we will use those and fuse them and make them into um, patterns into the lanterns
but if you want to you can use those scraps yourself so just use smaller pieces of um, the white plastic background and you can literally just put a load of glue rub a load of glue onto that and sprinkle them on top and press them down into it um, didn't do a very good job of framing this so I'll skip to the end so very very randomly these were just sprinkled and stuck down but it looks pretty and um, we can use those as joining pieces in the lanterns you can use the little tiny pieces and deliberately chop them up into small pieces to make quite nice patterns you can you can build up letters or fill in shapes with this technique also if you've got um, some thinner pieces of plastic that aren't very um, bright so they're quite transparent you can double them up or triple them up so that um, the colour's stronger as well as cutting your own letter shapes out you might find a lot of text on uh, plastic bags so you can use the individual letters I quite like um, working with barcodes as well and making patterns out of those um, but you can cut out letters individual letters either like ransom note style or you can use them um, as individual parts of a picture if you like so this um, O here is going to make a good circle for me when we receive your artwork We'll just be checking that there aren't any loose bits and sticking them down if there are. And then we'll be fusing them with other layers of plastic to make them stronger. So this is a heat process and if you heat plastic it is going to give off fumes. So this is not something I'd recommend you do at home. When I do this I have to wear a chemical mask. So this is my gear and just to make sure that it doesn't harm me in any way if I breathe in just to stop me breathing in any of the fumes. So once you've completed your pictures and the glue is dry, you can stack them up ready to pass them on to us and you'll just need to find a bag to put them in. Don't forget to put the scraps as well, so either stuck down in a pattern or if you've got them in the little envelope or pocket and find either a paper bag or a plastic bag that they'll fit in. You can gently fold them um, to fit them in, that should be fine. Um, but if you've got one of these big flat plastic bags, then that would be great if you could put them in just layered one on top of the other. The other thing to put into the bag, please, is a sheet of paper with the names of anyone who is involved in making the pictures. Also, please give us an email address or phone number if you'd like Ideas Test to send updates on the project. Tell us the first part of your postcode, like ME4. That helps us to see which areas of Medway got involved. And then, just briefly, what were the hopes and dreams or positive things that you chose for your pictures? You can fold this over and seal it if you want to, but um, you can use the drop-off points. There's one in Rochester and one in Chatham. And um, just fold them over and pop them through a letterbox if we're not open. Thank you so much for taking part. I really hope you're going to enjoy doing this. And I can't wait to see your designs and make them into some fantastic lanterns.